Okay. Uh, according to the program I have, the first speaker is uh, Professor Francesco Tafuri from the University of Naples in Italy. He is very well known in this community for his work on Gaussian junctions uh, and superconducting electronics and uh, uh, way beyond that. Uh, was a friend of uh, late Vladimir Kresin. And uh, I, I will make this introduction short because this session is not really about us, it's about Vladimir. So, Francesco, please. Uh, Ivan, thanks so much for the introduction. And, uh, uh, you know, for me, it's a, a, a big emotion to, to start this, this, you know, to this memorial. First of all, I would like to thank the family to be here. Uh, Vitali, uh, if you can say a few words, that would be uh, very nice, would really appreciate, and then I will start saying a few words. Can you hear us? Yeah, can you, can you see and hear me? Good. Can you hear me? Can see you. All right, well, I'll assume that you can hear me and I will really say just a couple of words. First of all, I want to uh, really thank Professor Genser for organizing this session. My father has come to this um, great conference several times and he really, really enjoyed it. It was only about eight years ago that there was a special event there to celebrate his 80th birthday. And that was, of course, a much happier occasion than today, but uh, he was very, very happy about that one and he remembered it for the rest of his life so i really have to say that he had an especially warm uh relationship to this community and to this conference and to its organizers so thank you so much and uh i guess the only other part i want to say is that uh it is really special that the uh event is taking place at the conference on superconductivity and magnetism both of these fields uh, were the ones where he did most of his work. And uh, as a true theoretical physicist, there was nothing more important in his life than uh, science. And uh, his entire life really uh, would not be imaginable without him completely devoted and uh, being aware of and uh, working on and thinking about uh, physics. So it's a really special thing that his colleagues are here to uh, remember him. And once again, thank you all very much. And uh, now I can uh, look forward to hearing Francesco. Thank you. Thank you so much, Vitali. <clears throat> so, uh, you know, I will try the presentation okay good <coughs> so um, you may ask uh, uh, why an Italian experimentalist on top is going to talk about <laughs> uh, and uh, you know the reason uh, is uh, is here that uh, uh, Vladimir was um, a very good friend of my of my maestro, Antonio Barone, and uh, there are a couple of pictures of a, uh, a few years ago, actually it was, this is in 99, and this is Vladimir, this is Antonio. And um, so, uh, I have to say that my life was very influenced by him because, you know, the, I was a uh, first year PhD student, he was passing by Napoli with the conversation proximity, and uh, Vladimir said, Antonio, why don't you send him to Berkeley for, for a short time? And then life started. And uh, this is I'm telling that just before, because it says a lot about the attitude. Um, Vladimir, you know, it's hard to talk after Vital. He said all important things, so I'm going to tell minor things, but, uh, you know, from a point of view of a friend, of a colleague, doing the um, same kind of research. And uh, uh, Vladimir was very, open mind and very um, uh, supportive towards ideas, young people. And, uh, and um, I will see in, in, you know, in the following other, other things. 
So um, I'm using uh, some <coughs> some outline of the, this journal superconductivity, uh, and I advertise for everybody. So here, the main the main point, the main interest has. Vitaly said he made remarkable contributions in transport of electromagnetic properties, proximity effect, isotope, strong coupling, and we will see shortly in a while some, some of his papers. And uh, so I, I would say that uh, um, his contributions are really remarkable for ITC superconductivity, we'll see shortly in different fields. So uh, starting from ITC, then how to increase TC, the, the, the last superconductor. So this was one of the big Teams. And the other one for, was for sure weak superconductivity, proximity effect, Gerson effect. So um, making research on, on clusters and how to couple clusters with tunneling. And uh, um, again, I would stress a lot that uh, even for an experiment, it was very easy to talk to him because he was very deep in experimental, uh, in experiments. He, he had a very pedagogical approach. It was very easy and very comfortable to talk to him. He would get the real physical problems and it would be an important, uh, you know, very clear, this is very, very simple. The other way around. Um, and this is also something that uh, um, uh, I, I took from uh, Berkeley Lab and uh, again, general information about, uh, no, I took some parts that really describe him so well, at least for me. Uh, you know, about the numbers of the papers and the topics, um, uh, his work combines sharp physical insight. And, uh, uh, and again, as I told him a few minutes before, uh, it was very nice to talk to him and also very easy to extract theory from, from his, his works and, his, and the discussions with him. And uh, um, uh, and uh, uh, here, again, we, we find the main topics. And, uh, uh, and again, I would say that here you see these two big lines about high TC superconductors, so problem material science and weak coupling superconductivity. And sometimes they meet, as we see shortly, we meet uh, uh, when uh, you want to, when you know, propose to increase the C of nanocluster by tunneling Josephson effect. And, uh, and um, really the, just to mix these two uh, main topics. <coughs> I collected some of his works for, for, for teams. And here, for instance, is uh, about uh, uh, Gerson effect in low dimensional systems and field effect. This was something where, you know, where I got close to, to, to Vladimir uh, uh, in the early times, and uh, uh, Vladimir made remarkable contributions in understanding how proximity effect would work in weak coupling uh, superconductors. You know, um, and this part and also the possibility to use superconductors with bias for field effect. Another remarkable part of work uh, is about uh, um, uh, electron phone interaction. This was a big topic of his interest, and uh, uh, this is a review of modern physics where he collects all these work and ideas and uh, <coughs> um, with other, another contribution. This was another big topic. And also I remember when I was in Berkeley, you know, it, it put me to study these kind of problems. Um, before I was mentioning how, uh, you know, before I talk about tunneling, now uh, strong, uh, strong coupling, and uh, these things start being together in cluster-based superconducting tunneling networks. These are meant to, uh, go in the direction of getting high temperature superconductivity. This was one of the main interests of Vladimir from different points of view. Here, through, through Johnson junctions, and we shortly see how this could work also in another system. I also want to remark the high quality of the collaboration with Yuri Oshinikov was a very strong team. 
also from Landau Institute background, and they, they made a lot of very, uh, gave a lot of very important contribution. Um, and this, now we, uh, we got to other path to room temperature superconductivity, pressure and high TC superconduct in sulfur harbor hydrates. And uh, <coughs> again, now you can see a collaboration with, with Gorkov, again to state his, his level and uh, the, you know, the, the relevance of these, of these studies. This was um, one of these, uh, um, you know, constant interest, obviously this was, was is more recent work. And uh, uh, again, high TC from another perspective. Then obviously we have a lot of major contributions, no, maybe I'm here, um, about uh, you know, what we, we are now, high TC cooperates. And uh, um, again, here there are different directions. Uh, and I would like to stress how all these papers with different ideas they are always very, uh, uh, very clear and going to direction experimentalists. For instance, here, you know, there was such a, uh, a careful pedagogical way of, of, of looking at high TC properties uh, from, a, from a theory point of view. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, comparing real parameters, something that experimentalists could, could, could use as a comparison. And uh, obviously, you know, um, I've touched some of these uh, highlights. And, and you know, uh, from my point of view, there are these two clear lines that also uh, Vitali, uh, you know, reminded at the beginning. Uh, obviously, these are clear to me because they are closer to, to, my, uh, to my domain of research and my expertise. And, uh, um, Vladimir, as we said before, was a very important member of the community. And uh, uh, this Nova Superconductivity is some, some kind of key book. This was related to the conference in 87 uh, in uh, um, San Francisco. Uh, I was not even, no, but, but I heard for, <laughs> for years about this conference, by the way, after uh, Discovery ITC materials and Vladimir was the main organizers and was putting community together to discuss and to, 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 to make progress. And uh, again, other books, you know, this is the cover and this is the, the, the program and still now the papers which are in this, uh, in this book are so inspiring and so long, you no, know, they, they reach the far future and it, it's, it's, a, it's a wonderful collection of papers of, of top people. And uh, Vladimir, as a told you before, you know, has this immense capability of communicating science at, uh, uh, even with brutal experimenters. And this book, I think it's wonderful in explaining superconductivity uh, 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 at, uh, uh, you know, from very fundamental point of view. Then maybe you, you can correct me, uh, you know, this I understood, I didn't know before, I didn't realize that was originally made in Russian and then translated later uh, in English. And uh, um, from uh, uh, Vladimir history that, you know, I, I referred to the to Berkeley connection and to, to journal superconductivity where some little parts of his life are described. You know, uh, when he was in Russia before moving to the States, he was very careful about this pedagogical part. And, and so this is some kind of, uh, of uh, uh, proof. Uh, and then there is more advanced and, and later production about superconducting uh, states. And uh, um, um, uh, then obviously, uh, you know, uh, all of us remember his uh, very precious uh, presence at conferences, seminars, and, uh, and uh, you know, he was one of the promoters of the community. And also these conferences that I would show a picture, you know, uh, and this is also confirmed by another amazing work he did for journal superconductivity and novel magnetism. As Vitaly re recalled, there were two big passions that were put in a journal. And uh, um, uh, this, uh, I would say, is a, is a very nice journal that is open, uh, you know, to encourage research everywhere. 
and uh, this, uh, you know, really he contributed to, to keep it in the forefront of the field and uh, organize a lot of special issues and topics. And uh, um, uh, Vladimir, obviously, you know, I try to summarize some of the main, uh, is of the highlights in line of research. Uh, obviously, uh, for, for us, it was a friend. Uh, a friend with an infectious love for music, opera, theater, art, literature, and, uh, and uh, he set high standards for science, art, honesty, and friendship. You know, all these, you know, they are all words that describe him and uh, live this life meeting his sons with passion, integrity, and humor that really are very well <laughs> words that really to him, passion, integrity, humor, uh, a great person, and um, a friend forever. Um, uh, this is, uh, uh, I was mentioning Vitali when he saw a month ago, uh, you know, that he was already not in good shape. This is, you know, uh, April the 2nd, where you know, he was, we were working to nominate uh, Yuri Ochinikov for the Larkin Memorial Award. Uh, you know, he was already not in great health, but always keeping the community alive and doing something for, you know, apart from the, the, the research. And uh, um, I will conclude with a few pictures, uh, you know, as a friend, the, the first one is, uh, uh, you know, it's at the conference uh, here in uh, eight years ago. Uh, this is on Bosporus in Istanbul with Lilia. And uh, as you know, uh, you know, this, this time he was going, you know, he was coming back from the theater opera in Napoli. <laughs> and then he passed at my place, this is about 20 years ago. And then here it's again at our place with uh, Tony Leggett, John Clark celebrating, no, uh, making the memorial for Antonio Barone. And this was one of the most recent one in Ischia. And um, again, you know, I would say as, mm, a life together from the science point of view. And I'm um, really, uh, you know, it's, um, it's uh, sad <laughs> not to have him anymore. His telephone calls late in the evening and um, I think it's enough. Thank you. Thank you, Francesco. Um, I think we can go on to the next um, speaker. It will be Professor Antonio Bianconi. From the Rome International Center for Material Science. And he will talk about Prof Professor Vladimir Tessin, key contributions in stripes physics. Okay, it's, um, I have a big emotion. Um, Vladimir was a, a real friend. And uh, the beauty of the life uh, is made by your friends. It was a, a scientist that um, I met uh, for 30 years. And um, uh, perhaps the first time was in Erische. But uh, so more than 30 years ago. And then we met uh, regularly. Uh, you know, science is beautiful because uh, you can become friends uh, everywhere in the world. So, uh, and he was really a good friend. Be friends uh, for me and crazy means that uh, we can share emotion and passion and uh, integrity uh, and uh, smile <laughs> uh, and the passion for science that is uh, a human activity. Science is a human activity. It's not a technical. It's really human activity. And uh, 
with the crazy, we were able to share the passion for music, for science, for poetry. And, uh, and also the joy, the, the joy to, to be out of the fancy stuff, to be out of the, of the fancy theories, out of uh, uh, the big, the, the, the majority, so there were, there were few. And uh, he, since um, um, he, he, he was one of the first to propose a multi-band superconductor before ITC superconductor, so with uh, Gelm. So he, he was uh, the first in, in many fields. Um, he has this special smile. <laughs> the smile of Vladimir was very particular, was, was provocative, was uh, beautiful, was f honest. So he was a really honest scientist. Uh, he was believing to theory, and uh, the theory should explain, uh, should be explained also experiments. So explain uh, experiments uh, should be looked at with always with uh, a new, a new eyes. That's why he helped us to grow a new generation of scientists and to discuss and to uh, and to bring uh, the real uh, beauty beauty of la of science. The I remember him in many occasions. <laughs> uh, I, I remind him like he is here now with us. Uh, I remember one evening, it was uh, in 96, we organi I organized with Alex Mueller the first Stripes conference in Rome. And we have a dinner in Barberini Palace. It was a beautiful place. And then at the end of the, the meeting, everyone was thinking that uh, is a stripes physics is something completely new, unexpected. Uh, so, uh, it, 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 was a it came up from the phase separation meeting of Alex Mueller. But then the idea that there was some topological pattern typical of, uh, of these materials uh, was, was, uh, was a, a collective uh, discovery of a group, including uh, Gorkov, uh, Krezin, uh, uh, Mueller. Uh, and then uh, at the end of the dinner, Vladimir came to my place and said, Antonio, you, you have to keep this conference in Rome and you will be the only chairman to, to take it out of the fancy stuff and continue to, to be honest in science and to bring new ideas. And then it became a very, very, so I, I was quite reluctant. I, <laughs> I am not a good politician. And, um, and he said, no, you have to do that in Rome regularly. And you will be, I will host all the proceedings in journal superconductivity. And we, we had for 30 years for the conference stripes, they were all published in the proceeding, proceeding were published in journal superconductivity. And I shared with him also the passion to select the paper. And we, are, we were always in agreement. So there was never discussions. <laughs> because he was honest. And honest is the most, to be honest is the most important quality of a scientist. And open mind. So um, he, he, he came to, to Rome, he was my guest. We went uh, together with Capurri uh, in Irish, in Ischia. He's uh, a big loss, so he's, uh, okay, I'm a little bit of emotion. It was a it was a one of the biggest scientists. I put him like uh, Gorkov. Uh, Gorkov was his friend also, because also Gorkov was the same type of uh, human. He liked uh, the science as a culture. Uh, uh, sorry, and he was, Gorkov also was a painter. Was uh, and uh, he was very happy when we gave the gold medal for Gorkov that didn't get the Nobel Prize. He was one of the pushed for to give him the the final gold medal. Okay, so I am happy to share with you the, the friendship with Vladimir. He will be always with us. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Bianconi. And um, now the next talk will be by Professor Davor Pabuna from EPFL on the personality of Professor Vladimir Kresin. Uh, 
Uh, I have, I, 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 no, no. <laughs> Fine. Thank you. Um, okay. Um, they want me to emphasize this part, which, of course, that's fine. It's easy enough for me. And, uh, of course, I'm also emotional. There is, a, there is a thing which I want to tell you immediately. Uh, Vitaly, if you are online, hopefully your mother is also online, Lilia, because we were very close friends. I, I just can start with an anecdote. Uh, in 1992, he was supposed to come to Lausanne to visit us and give a talk. And everything was ready, and, and suddenly there was a panic, and I didn't know how to contact him. And I had to cancel everything, and then they continued to Geneva, whatever. And it was very simple. I sent a message. That night, my daughter was born, and I couldn't really be with Lilia and himself. And this is life, we just discussed. I mean, I, 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 everything was prepared and everything, and then suddenly you go to hospital, you're with your wife, you get a baby, and the good friend, his wife, we couldn't do anything. They, we, we didn't have those phones and everything, and so, event like that. There is another one which I want to show you, and this is very important. Uh, the speakers before me said a lot of important things, and I will not repeat, but I'll still say something which says a lot. I don't know how to move this. Uh, can you put the next one for me, please? The next slide. Uh, this is important, next slide. And the reason is, you can see Vladimir here. And next to, to him, and you all know, and Antonio already mentioned, is Alex Muller. And if you read one of the books to which, uh, one of the fashions for Alex, who is still alive with us, uh, Vladimir said how they clicked immediately already at uh, Woodstock of Physics in New York. And I, I knew Vladimir so well in many discussions like other people said, and we discussed things which I'm not really free to say in the public, like uh, as you already said, he was very honest. And we already noticed in the early days of ITC and knowing of the blast, there were certain people who were trying to take over, so to speak, physics. And as some of you will remember, we had a, was it called ITC update and stuff like that? So there were, there were kind of a comments where were not always uh, clear and so on. And Vladimir tried to get this truth. And we kind of had a lot of fights among uh, people in the community, as, as Antonio Bianconi said. And Vladimir was so close to Alex Muller that he would always talk to Alex. And I think Ant Antonio said, and several other people, Alex Muller had a fantastic feeling for science, and Vladimir shared it. It's almost like, as you said, it's kind of a friendship, and it's intuition. It's kind of artistic part. And I remember the early uh, conferences, be it in Stripes, or also we had conferences with, with Ivan Bozovic in California, even before Stripes, in 94 in, in Los Angeles, on, and, and I met uh, Vladimir. And Vladimir had this rare combination, as Tafuri said as well, he could understand experiment, he knew the theory, but he had a, this s sense for science. And to share science with him, it was special, absolutely special. Then if you go uh, here, we can see Shangelaya here on, on, on the side, because uh, Shangelaya was in those days also doing the thesis in Zurich and also was Claude Miller. And two of them, and this is why I wanted this photograph, Alex Miller and Vladimir Kresen helped uh, many, many people. You know, in those days in the U.S., you couldn't get easily positioned in the theory because there was a, basically already from day one school of thought that it's basically one band Hubbard plus extensions. I'm oversimplifying, but that was it. And it was pretty powerful. And even for experimental, it's not easy. And those that had ideas, like Alex Muller, as you correctly said, and several other people, uh, and Vladimir came even from multiband story and had also some discoveries before, that was not easy. So you, there was a kind of political correctness, so to speak, and there was a true science. And we had already from day one 
a bunch of people who were coming to all these conferences, whether we're doing it in California or elsewhere, Vladimir organized several of those, where we are trying to get the facts right. And Alex Mueller, just like Vladimir Kresin, were among them. And just to show you this, in year 2000, there was a meeting in Klosters in Switzerland on the superconductivity of the next millennium. And there were many of these people I mentioned. And really, again, honesty was the matter of the day. But again, the same year, 2000, Vladimir organized in Berkeley a meeting and invited all sorts of uh, experts. And just to show you what kind of person he was, at some point he tells us, today we have a special guest star. And we were all there, you know, a lot of good people, scientists. He said, today I invited Edward Teller. Now can you imagine, we were, you know, or experts in superconductivity mainly, and Edward Teller ever knew who he was. And Edward Teller at that time, he was already 100 years old, and he was in the chair. And Vladimir liked to organize a meeting like that, and he said to Teller, they might ask you some tough questions. And Edward Teller told to all of us, like in the chair, he was moving, he said, he said to us, like we were on the same level because he was sitting in the chair, Edward Teller tells to all of us, he said, aha, uh -huh, you guys, can ask me any question you want in physics. I reply in 30 seconds. Wow, we were frozen. And that kind of person dies. And I was, I was standing next to Vladimir and he was kicking me. He knew that I can be kind of bold and asking. He said, well, ask him, ask him something. Nobody wanted to ask. How can you ask Teller a question? I mean, you know, the guy knows all about it. I said, Professor Teller, do you still play your piano in Chopin on your piano? And Teller was frozen. I said, how do you know that? Well, I said, I read the Dyson's book. And Dyson's book showed exactly what we said. Scientists are also humans. They like art. They like poetry. And Freeman Dyson described Edward Teller. And that's very much what Vladimir told me is exactly true. He liked to like piano. And as you said, and Tafuri, we had so many events with Vladimir at various conferences and with also his wife, Lilia where we just felt this human part. And to conclude it with the latest news that happened later on. Uh, last time, more or less, that he came to visit me in Lausanne, he gave a talk. And that was at a several conference as well. And then he pulled out something which we share passionately. If you go to next slides, you will see, because I have a next slide. In this diagram, we met more or less around here when this started with high TC. And in that diagram, we all learned about complexity and how to go theory and complexity and all the personalities that you heard. And Vladimir was definitely somebody who helped everybody, including the journals and talking to us regularly. And if we go next, already we heard, next slide, we heard about the book. Now the book was translated from Russian and the co-author was Stuart Wolf. I know them both very well. That appeared in 1990. At the time, I was writing a book with Michel Siro, and we were only one or two years late. So if you saw the next one, uh, we wrote the book and we had the foreword by Pierre Gilles de Gênes. But we just appeared one or two years after Crescent and Wolf. And then we met. And the question was, is there any jealousy? Because we, we wrote the book and those guys wrote the book. There was none. We were recommending each other and everything else. Unfortunately, Michel Siro, also a good friend, he passed away on the 1st of July this year as well. So we lost also Michelle. But in 1994, when there was a conference in Grenoble, M Square S, all these people were together and science was shared. So there was not this kind of opponents. Uh, Vladimir and everybody else in the community was working for science. And you will see now why. If you go to the next diagram, this was he shared. How many times I dis discussed this with him? I'm sure you did and everybody else. Vladimir was convinced, like probably many other people in the audience, that we are just in the beginning of superconductivity. That microscopic quantum phenomena, and actually Tony Leggett say, said to me the same, I'm teaching more than 30 years of quantum fluids. This is not finished. This is why I'm also at these conferences. I'm sure Vladimir would have been very happy to be with us. Vladimir 
had this dream and he had this vision. And he tried to convince everybody in discussions, how can we go higher in materials? How can we understand the theory better? And how can we keep this human element, which we all share? And for example, Ivan Bozovic, he's one of our chairs, very often they discuss how to do artificially made materials and then even, even came to the clusters, for example. There were several other things. And with that dream, I think we should pursue the dreams of Vladimir Kresen because he's a dear friend and I miss him like the rest of you. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I should pass my word to Professor Bosovic, who is online. Hi, everyone. Uh, I think we, we should uh, now open the, the floor to anyone in the audience who would like to say something. Ali, you look like you're handling microphone. Yes. Uh, thank you, Herman. Uh, I'm sorry. Ivan also. Uh, I have been working with Vladimir on the journal. And first time I met um, via email in 2010. Then we continued our friendship. Be well, most, um, I'm not an easy guy, so most of times we discuss few issues and we never uh, get crossed, but he was a good man, and let's say, let him stay in peace, and this is my word for him and for his family and all friends. Thank you. <coughs> Anyone else would like to say something? Well, it's not much to add. Uh, when I was like still, say, a kid, he was a well-known, world-known physicist. And well, looking at his name at the book, I could never imagine that I will meet him like a real living person and we'll be talking to him. And when we met, indeed, I have almost nothing to add. What was absolutely striking is like his friendliness and his like, okay, goodwill. And well, at this time when he approached me, actually it was in I think, Ali, it was in one of your conferences. And uh, he approached me at that time, together with Carla and Christina, we wrote one of our like, okay, first paper about this gauge theory of the superconductor insulator transition to say that it was met with disbelief it's not quite correct. It was not just noticed, so to say, despite the fact that it, it seemed to explain from the beginning to the end the whole story of, of superconductor insulator transition. Um, I don't know how did he learn about it, actually, to tell the truth. We, okay. We were invited to, like, to present this our paper to this memorial workshop. Uh, not memorial, sorry, but to workshop to celebrate the Nobel Prize of Kosterlitz, Staulis, and Haldane. They invite. They wanted to have this our paper to this book, which was a great honor for us. And then, of course, and then. Uh, Vladimir approached me and he said that he knows about this our work. I don't know how did he okay, actually got it and that he would like to publish it 
with some changes, of course, compared to, to this book in his journal. Well, it was so absolutely striking and like, okay, goodwill and f it was seen immediately that he is used to be absolutely remarkable person. And well, made the strongest impression. And well, we were meeting just okay shortly after that. The paper was published and but this first impression, which I've got, I probably will never forget. Yeah. So, thank you. And okay. <laughs> and good memory to the people like him. Uh, may I say a couple of words real quick? Sure, go okay. ahead. Just a couple of notes. First of all, uh, as it has been mentioned, uh, the and uh, as obvious, you know, the first part of uh, my father's career took place in the former Soviet Union. He did not have a smooth path to becoming a well-known physicist. He was um, prevented from entering the physics faculty uh, after graduating from high school because he was Jewish, it was only by meeting some remarkable people and getting remarkable advice that he was able to become a physicist. And that really developed an enormous sense of willpower in him because nothing was uh, easy in, uh, in that life. Then uh, when they, uh, my parents uh, decided to come to the United States, uh, one of the main reasons was that, so I would have a chance at a good education and become a physicist myself they had to restart their lives from scratch. And uh, that also was not something that most of us or many of us have had to experience and nor do we wish anybody to experience that. But uh, that also required an enormous amount of drive and dedication to science. Uh, that's one thing I wanted to point out. The other thing I want to say is that uh, those of you who know his work and it has been commented on, Many times, his style of work, his dedication to theoretical physics, his taste in theoretical physics, connection between physics and experiment, making sure things are correct, making sure your uh, calculations are done thoroughly and honestly, making sure that uh, you're being true to the physics and not to your tastes or political preferences, are directly descended from the uh, school of Landau. Those uh, who are familiar with Landau's work can probably hear the echoes of that style in my father's work as well. In fact, Landau was one of the greatest life influences on him. He met him personally. He loved talking about uh, a time when they had an opportunity to spend a couple hours together one-on-one. -on -one. was one of the most influential couple of hours in his life. And it is... Uh, a said realization that that entire school, that entire textbook, that entire physics culture is now beginning to recede into the past. As many of you probably know, uh, Lev Pitayevsky, who was probably the last living uh, direct student of Landau's, passed away at the end of August. And therefore, that entire physics culture is now beginning, turning from a live, breathing organism into something which is more of a museum piece. Of course, lots of grandchildren are continuing to move on, but it is kind of a realization that the entire taste in physics, the entire school of physics, as of this summer, is kind of beginning to turn from a, a living body into more of a recollection. So we should be aware of that because that is a rather um, momentous event, I would say, in uh, development of the uh, you know, history of, of the science. And uh, with that, I'll finish. I just wanted to thank you all again for being here. This uh, group of friends and colleagues would have been very, very precious for him to be aware of. And it really makes a big, uh, it, it, it really means a great deal to both me and to my mother, who is also online watching this. Thank you again. Thank you very much. Okay, maybe... At this point, I would like to 
to uh, add a few few comments on my own. Uh, we have heard uh, several speakers repeating um, as uh, main um, you know aspects characters of the of the character of uh, Vladimir Kresin was his um, great communication skills, his clarity and simplicity in communication, his uh, physics intuition, uh, his uh, critical log logical thinking, uh, and and also his humor. And I would like to comment upon of all of these to give it a little bit of a, of a twist. Uh, it is true that uh, he was capable of communicating in very simple, clear, intuitive terms. He would use uh, ball and stick models and analogies and metaphors. Uh, and when you hear his talk and when he talked to me, uh, I could understand everything. Uh, for example, when I talked to Phil Anderson, I could understand nothing. Uh, so uh, that's how I talked about Vladimir. Until I heard him talk to people like um, Yuri Ovchinikov or Gorkov or someone else, and then uh, he would suddenly switch to a lingo of you know anomalous infections and some other heavy stuff that I cannot follow at all. And only then I realized that uh, his main characteristic was his enormous bandwidth in the communication. He was capable to communicate at the highest level. Uh, to the appropriate audience, but he was also able to adjust uh, his um, uh, language and communication uh, to people who understand nothing and know nothing. Uh, the second thing about, you know, this physics intuition, uh, I would say he had a great imagination because uh, to, he, he was thinking in pictures. He had uh, 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 physical pictures of of atoms, of molecules, of superconductors, and so on. Uh, and uh, that, of course, uh, um, a couple with his, with his uh, creativity would immediately trigger model explanation for any new experimental facts that he would hear. Uh, if, if he were present with us today, I think he would uh, be smiling to find out that the younger physicists uh, are, are rediscovering electron phonon coupling and uh, uh, disorder and uh, granularity and localization and the like, uh, things that he was talking about already about 35 years ago. Uh, then about uh, his critical thinking, he was a, a prolific reader. He read everything that was published about high TC, uh, also as the editor of, of Journal of Superconductivity. So he knew all the experiments uh, and theoretical papers. He would read them quickly, and he was extremely fast to detect any logical leaps and mistakes, uh, uh, the assumptions that are made uh, explicitly or implicitly, uh, but they were uh, actually in conflict with other experiments. Uh, and that's uh, you know, where his humor would kick in. So typically he would, uh, he would comment with just uh, in one liner uh, uh, or that, that some of which I remember, and these were devastating. So there was um, 30 years ago or so, uh, there was one phenomenological theory uh, that got, uh, you know, a lot of uh, pamper and, and publicity. Uh, and he looked at that, and his comment was, they just read the experiment one step backward. Uh, and that did it to me. You know, I could never take that, uh, that theory seriously ever after. Uh, there was another occasion when uh, I got excited about some insight and was talking to uh, Vladimir uh, Hans Moravitz and Yuri Ovchinikov. I think it was the longest seminar I ever ever gave, like four or five hours seminar. And um, uh, what I, what my my, my original, uh, you know, um, paradox that that sent me uh, on this path was 
uh, realization, now we are talking of year 89 or 90, that we had like 10 greatest theoretical condensed matter physics is, physics of the time, uh, like Phil Anderson, Mott, uh, Bardeen, um, Leggett, um, Laughlin, etc., uh, come up with Ginsburg and so on, come up with theories of high TC that were all different, orthogonal to one another. So uh, not more than one can be right. The other n minus one must be wrong. But they were all, all claiming that they agree with all the key experimental data, which included the anomalous normal state property like strange metal things, uh, a linear row versus T, um, uh, infrared absorption, Raman, and, and so on that I was mentioning. Now, I was saying, how is it possible? You know, this, these people are giants. They know what they're talking about. Uh, the, 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 the consequences, the conclusion follow from their premises. What's, you know, how could that be? Uh, and I was saying, okay, it is possible that each of these people is making uh, um, theory based on, let's say, five or 10 postulates. But not all of these postulates are actually necessary for the consequences that follow. It may be that one or two are crucial. And they have these two all in common. So each of them has these two, but then they have others. And that's why, why in the end they look different. So what could it be? And what I came up with was that each of these theory, when you look at it, it has a coexistence of a broad band with something like a delta function in the density of states. Uh, uh, in, for example, in the, um, here, let me pick up one example. In the theory of Mott, you have a broad band which is polaronic, and then you have a narrow band which is bipolaronic. And in RVB, you have spinons which are fermions, therefore broad, and you have holons which are uh, uh, bosons, therefore sharp, and so on. And now, if you have that, you can, from that, you can derive basically all the anomalous normal state properties. Uh, you are going from a, from a big peak in the density of state to a flat band. So that's why you have rho versus T, and then you have infrared, and you have Raman, et cetera. And anyway, I was very excited about that. Uh, and, you know, as I said, it lasted like four hours or five until I told everything that was on, on my soul. Uh, and then, uh, uh, Vladimir had one of these one-liners. Uh, you know, I probably responded with mine, but it worked on me, and I never ever published that, nor even uh, talked about it to to anyone uh, again. And uh, you know, that's uh, uh, that's about his sense of humor. He would sometimes, instead of one-liner, he would throw uh, a joke, which was something from uh, Soviet era. Uh, uh, like Radio Yerevan jokes and so on. And that would be a metaphor that was a killer. So if you worked in his field uh, and overlapped with him, you can count on that he has read your article and that he actually made one of those one-liner comments. Uh, so did I. So that's where we had great resonance. Uh, but uh, none of this will be published uh, before my death. So I think if he is listening to us now, he's probably smiling. So I think, um, Ivan, we can finalize this now. Um, yes. I, yes, thanks. Thank you for being there. And thanks for everyone for participating. And um remembering such a great uh, figure thank you very much yes uh, one one moment yes. we have some announcements yes it's overriding but i think we need five minutes break then we will start this uh quantum technologies uh, session five just five minutes and take coffee or something and uh, then we will resume and you will be chairing the session, I think, for the next session. Yeah? I don't know. I don't have the program with me.
Tony, it's uh, me and Antonio, Tony Bianconi. Okay, okay, that's great. That's okay. great. Okay. Yeah, Bianconi and myself. Uh, uh, Tony, I suggest that you 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 handle it because you are in the room, and I will be online. Thank you, Ivan. Nice, nice to see you again.